so we're at the end of the Tenji OVA. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> the big climax. <laughs> Very exciting. Come again? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that's Yamato's well, first that's time that we're thinking of. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so we're back with the big showdown with Kagato and the various characters. Whoops, actually. Oh, yes, we, we had seen that. And um, so, yeah, so people are getting pretty serious. Here. What's going on? That's not. Hold on. We're, we're getting queuing up um, for some reason. Continue. Oh, it was that problem. Okay, one second, guys. Sorry. Every time we do this, something goes weird. So, um, uh, if you haven't checked it out yet, mm -hmm. uh, we do have some interviews with yes. some incredible ladies mm -hmm. who have got a Kickstarter program off the ground. They were fully funded, and they are setting up a makerspace for cosplayers. Oh, isn't that awesome? That is great. There's so much that uh, collaborative work mm. can 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 accomplish that you can't do as an individual. Exactly. Just imagine the outfits that you can do <laughs> that can be made now. So they're still looking for a space, I understand. So mm -hmm. uh, if you know anybody out there who has uh, warehouse space or office space in the DC metro area, mm -hmm. um, you might want to contact them. And yeah. do you remember what their website was? Studiocosplay.org dot org. I tried dot com. You want dot org. Studiocosplay.org. Indeed. Org. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, and they got all their information up there about what they plan to do and all their their uh, um, their, their plans. And links to the Kickstarter, so you see all that stuff. Very talented. Very talented folks with a lot of experience. They also, um, I think they link to their. Well, we, we actually, we, um, I link to their Facebook pages in the description um, for our interviews. So you can go to their Facebook pages and see all the cosplay they've done. They have photos up there of all their outfits. So you can see some of the stuff they've done. It's very impressive. Very cool. So, OK. So we're at the end of Tenchi. No. No, no exactly. But we're now facing down some of the big um, stuff at the end of the story. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Very big stuff. Very big stuff. So, at the end of the last episode, we had a bit of a shocker that Tenchi seems to have been destroyed. No, Tenchi, no. No. He's, he's, it appears he's been obliterated. There's just no mm. trace of him anywhere. Exactly. And so there's a little bit of argument between Ayaka and Ryoko about what that actually means. But Ryoko pulls a gem. And from her ear. From her ear. She, she, was, was she hiding that? She may have been. So now she has two gems, and she's transforming into battle armor there. Pretty cool. And now she's going. She, now she's in full rage mode. She attacks the the soja. And we cut back to. So this is kind of kind of interesting. Sasami's back on Earth. She did not go along with them. Um, so she's back on there and trying to. Um, she's very scared about Tenchi and what's going to happen. And so she does this interesting thing. Hey, and I. She calls in the power of the trees. Hmm. Now, there are different types of trees in this show. So There are. So there's ordinary trees, and then there's trees that are spaceships. Right. Um, and she certainly seems to be calling upon the Jirai trees, and we see the logo there, or some kind of symbol uh, of the trees. Cutting back to our heroes Trying to do the spaceship. Back on the spaceship. Doing <laughs> back on the ranch. We see that Aika has transformed. She's got her own um, uh, sort of battle armor on. We'll see here in a second. Some great Sakuga animation. Here. There we go. So she's got her own stuff going. That's pretty cool stuff. And this huh. ship is no ordinary ship. This is an no. unusual ship. It's a very unusual ship. Um, Kagato claims he built it, but now we're starting to see later on in the episode, that's quite not quite true. And then, of course, we have a little organ sequence. I gotta have that. <laughs> yeah, villain, you gotta have an organ. <laughs> exactly. But then we cut back and we see there's Tenchi. With the wooden Coke cans. With the wooden Coke cans. <laughs> the protectors. Exactly. So the, the, the defenders did their, their job, and they're, they're holding him in stasis, but now the White Hawk wings have unfurled. But who could be doing that? She looks kind of familiar. Yeah. Kind of a little bit. She has long oh. hair. Oh. oh, she's getting pretty close to. She him. is, yeah. Almost wow. like she knows him. What's oh, going on? Oh, oh, oh she, my goodness! She, she 
He just entered it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, spirit. And forms a protective layer. All right. And now we get to, uh, to find Kagato. But Mahoshi well, she has a problem. Yeah. She wants to go along with. Come on, oh. why not? But her little, back. yeah. Her little, cube. Mm -hmm. Her control cube. Control cube bounced in and put her on the other side of the, the floor. What the heck's mm -hmm. going on here? How That's strange. That. That's on. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, and this gets back to some of the, the, this wonderful inventiveness of this whole series. Uh, weird technology. Ryoko's pulling energy beams out of it everywhere. Uh, the technology is just really, really different. Very alien. Very, very, it, it almost reminds me of a through the looking glass. You have yes. the two sides of the mirror there. And exactly. The different realities. Yeah, it's very, very different. Um, kind of abstract. Very <laughs> empty at your world. Yeah. Uh, we were noticing that. I'd love to have a living room that size. <laughs> <laughs> So we have our, our confrontation with Kagato. And this is important plot-wise because we need to see the um, how powerful our villain is. We need, to, we need to establish that. We've seen Kagato before. We've seen him handily solve problems. But now we get to actually um, get a chance been shot in the chest. Yeah, and he just shrugs it right off. Oh, that, oh and then whoa. That kind of, whoa. Right. He seems, nope, not quite. Uh, as every every good villain has a, has a, <laughs> <laughs> has a shadow. Right. <laughs> A decoy mm -hmm. presence. Uh oh. Yeah, not good. Not good. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. You just really suck the energy out of her. Mm -hmm. Completely inert. And now she's vulnerable, which is not good. Now here again we see those, those empty hands. Which is very interesting. Yeah, everybody's beginning to get some markings yeah. on their face, which is yeah. a little bit different from how we've mm -hmm. seen them. In in other scenes. Yeah, um, that has seemed to have something to do with this this sort of Jirai and battle armor, this sort of uh, uh, Jirai being the, these uh, sort of alien princesses. Uh, so we get a little bit of f fun here with Mahoshi playing around with these these snakes. Um, and, and again, here we have, and I, I want to um, point this out, one of the things we've seen in the, in the series is that Mahoshi is uh, kind of goofy and she's silly and she doesn't know what she's doing. But the snakes attack her and she immediately does this Pretty damn awesome backflip. Wow. <laughs> Instinct takes <laughs> over. <laughs> Jump. <laughs> she really lays it out on those snakes. Exactly. So she doesn't pull any punches. I, I think she doesn't like snakes. <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> not again to spoiler territory, but um, later on, they were, they were um, there are strong hints, and they, they deal with, with, with the idea that Mihoshi has, like, the best worst luck in the universe. <laughs> so she attracts all these problems, but she's able to, just through sheer luck, able to deal with them. Oh, was that well, a new person? Oh there? yeah, so there, there's this red-headed girl that that uh, has, has shown up behind poor Mahoshi there. <laughs> the snakes are starting to break free. <laughs> Do something cube. You're right. It's a Rubik's cube. The Rubik's cube. <laughs> the control cube. Like, <laughs> I like right. how she twists. <laughs> And it's doing something clearly. And it's about my experience with the Rubik's cube. I can yeah. twist it, and that's yeah. I never get anything. At some point, you'll have the trick to uh, change the labels, the shortcuts, <laughs> pop a quarter out and read it somewhere. Yeah, right. <laughs> Whoa, this that was close. Yeah, she's Two out. Characters. Yep. So this well, this is Washu, who Washu. clearly appears to know what what she's doing and what's going on. Yeah, very self confident. She just knocks there. those snakes out of the way. No, what? And pulls Ryoko through. How convenient! How so nice. So, so she pulled her through the floor. Yeah. Now we know that we're in like some some the other side, the other side. Ship. Yeah. And she very frankly uh, looks at Ryoko's body and uh, and oh, her, her she, muscle tone. Her, her visual psychological tactics are off, <laughs> and she. Points that out in a very physical way. She points that out here. Yeah, point out. Ex <laughs> you should note where she's pointing. So what does she mean by s visual psychological tactics? Your sex, sex appeal, appeal of course. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me I have been changed in seven hundred years. Of course, the voice is a little better. <laughs> that's my voice in seven hundred years. <laughs> right. She says that's no way to talk to your mom. Mom. 
Ah. Oh. Um, <laughs> so here we have the big reveal that Washu is the uh, this, this brilliant genius scientist that basically built everything we see here, the ship, and Ryoko, and Ryooki, and the brains behind the whole operation exactly. there. Exactly, which he's been trapped away in this sort of megaverse for 700 years. That's a long time to be trapped away. Absolutely. Um, and uh, so clearly, something, something, some kind of problem going on with her. Um, she couldn't quite deal with it. Um, we'll note again here, I, I think we talked about it before, the um, uh, non-symmetrical designs here. I have some of the costume on one side of the face, but not on the other side of the face, the neat design element yeah. in the series. <laughs> ah, so Ryoko's a little annoyed, but, but here's the thing. Washu, because she is her mother and she built her, knows everything going on inside Ryoko. <laughs> with how she feels, all her desires, her desires, all she wants to do with Tenchi, <laughs> and this and that, and, and the other things she wants to do. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> you. <laughs> but Ryoko can go can go back. She and she has that power because she can teleport between things. We've seen that before. Um, now on the other side, she was kind of stoned. She was, Whoa. but hopefully now, yeah, we'll kind of sexy. <laughs> What's going on there? <laughs> I think it's very unsexy, very quickly. Uh, so Yosho appears in front of Aika. Yosho is Aika's brother, is she or half brother that she was searching for so long. She's dreaming, but look at that. Yeah, yeah. tendrils going around. Oh, yeah. I think she thinks there's something fishy going mm -hmm. on here. Yeah, he's disassembling her here. He's a faker. Yeah, <laughs> that's not that, him. That's not him. No. Uh, it was a trick all along. Imagine that. <laughs> you got him. Oh, a bolt through his arm. Yeah. Now, he's not using his shadow now, so that must hurt. That must hurt, but he can deal with it. He's powerful. He's very powerful. And so we get a little bit more combat. But now we cut back to, so now Tenchi is in this special place with this new character who calls herself Tsunami. Tsunami. And we've been introduced to the Tsunami before. Um, Kagato asked how to get the power of Tsunami. Um, what I think is explained at some point is that Tsunami is the most powerful tree ship that the Jiraiyans have. Wow. But it's a secret. Like, no one's seen it or, 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 or heard it. It's just it's a legend of this, this ship. And we get a hint later on in the scene as to what's going on. It's obviously Tenchi's being sort of regenerated or, or healed up. By tsunami. Tsunami, tsunami. Oh, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? Hmm. His 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 outfit is yeah, exactly. <laughs> and he has a green. <laughs> he does. Head, so he must be in some of the armor. Mm -hmm. So he he's, he's starting to get. Well, we we know he he is descended from Yosho, mm -hmm. so he has that royal blood in him. So he's starting to to claim to, to get some to claim on this. We had some we had some wonderful animation here. Um, wonderful battle animation. No way out. <laughs> no cheer for them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so this is some interesting um, bit that you're supposed to kind of understand what's going on. <laughs> That's why it's so powerful, because it's perfect. <laughs> um, so he stops and, and we see that these um, those, those little bits come around him. That is Ayaka's protect, uh, protectors. Um, the little protective wooden bits that she can summon, she's now summoning, summoning them around Kagato. So she's weak. But she can at least stop him from moving. Wow. So Aika is doing her best, which is very dangerous because Aika does not is not physically as powerful as Ryoko is. She has lots of, of powers, but she you know physically she can get very damaged. Hmm. So now that he's stopped, Ryoko tries that. That that's gonna hurt, which is good. So what's gonna happen? Very much. Mm -hmm. We get some some fun look at this, but Kagato's not stopped. <laughs> Now he knows all the tricks. Oh, that's gonna hurt. Oh, <sighs> blood! I think that was no. one of the things they they cut out. He teleports. So I really like the the the, the tag teaming going on here. Yeah. This idea that the characters are trying to different things Whoa. with each other. That's pretty cool. Huh. That's but some it, power there. That's <laughs> some power. So she tries to crush that's him, <laughs> but she can't crush him. Why not? And so that this is a mystery which Washu reveals. So the problem is with Aika there. If Ryoko un unleashes her full power, all that energy will just burn. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, friendly and foe. <laughs> yeah. 
tied together. Exactly. Like super. <laughs> and not a good thing. And so, the sweet little uh, gesture there. Of course, she'll never say it. No, no. <laughs> Because they're tag team, the exactly. enemy of my enemy. Right, exactly. Yes, <laughs> my friend. Exactly. So Washu quick pulls Ayaka out. He's very smart, trying to give Ryoko some time. Unfortunately, um, so because these are all kind of of a piece, the uh, um, Kagato is able to tap into Ryoko's power. Mm -hmm. Basically, use her as a battery for his ship, which is not a good thing. Wow. <laughs> so she's being drained as a, a power source for the ship, and so now he's going to attack Earth in a very Grand Moff Tarkin Star Wars kind of gesture. <laughs> um, so he'll he'll blow that apart so he can get to Sasami and Yosho back on Earth, mm. which would be bad. So he, so and, and again, this is one of those things where he's, he's gonna he's gonna shoot them. Um, the assumption is that they're powerful enough they're not going to be destroyed to be some sort of protection. But that will remove whatever they're on so we can then get to them. It'll, it'll weaken them. The blast goes. However, but expectations do not meet reality. So that was blockage, but not just any blockage. Not just any blockage. And uh, there's this neat little shot here where uh, we get... <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, this is the problem with dimensional starships. <laughs> you can get stuff out of nowhere. And so the Lighthawk wings reappear. Now the Lighthawk, the most powerful ship. So, so um, this is a manifestation of the Jiraiyan power. Um, the royal family ship. The royal family ship. So um, th this is now manifested. Um, and so. Oh. oh He's trying to stop there, but oh, what, what's happening to his arm? Oh, Whoa. did he just grow his hand back? He just quick? grew his hand back real quick. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and there's our hero. The G finally shown up. He's covered the green thing, but he's got the stripes there. He does, yeah. So he's healed up a little bit. And look at his outfit. Wow, that's a very, <laughs> very different. It is. It's it's uh, um. Just, oh. You know, I noticed something here. His voice mm -hmm. started to sound more mature and yes. confident. Mm -hmm. it's, even though his leg is stuck, <laughs> and it's still like a little goofy there. Around my leg. Yep. But he has the help of these two. These two come on in and try to to stop things, but not too uh, not too helpful there, unfortunately. But now Tenchi has. There we go. Yeah. Pulls out the sword, Tenchi. Again, some great animation there. Trying to attack Kagato, but it's yeah, he's still too powerful. Now Kagato says mm -hmm. here that he has all the gems. He does. He so does. He's, he's managed to recover all the gems. Um, so he's pretty powerful. He, 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 indeed, he is. And so, still using the sword though, Tenchi. Mm -hmm. He's doing his best, but there's just too much energy. Other um, not really, not really working out so so well for Tenchi. So what's Tenchi gonna do now? As Kagato gets all scribbly and he's monologuing, doing a lot of monologuing in this. But Kagato is a cool villain. So now he's pulling um, tsunami in. So now he's he's trying to um, pull in that ship, so which means he can take it over, which would be very bad. Cool. And this is an important point here is one of the things that kind of I think makes anime often different than other other shows is that the heroes admit defeat hmm. but Tenchi says I, I fail I can't do it I'm done Ryoko says uh, there's a very touching little moment in here with Ryoko where, where she said look you got what you want let him go hmm. um, you know Tenchi's not important to you anymore you're gonna have tsunami just stop it you know she has no leverage she's just begging yeah <laughs> that's pretty bad so she, she really does like it. She does. She lose everything else. <laughs> <Yeah>. Potentially. Exactly. <laughs> and so Tsunami's advice is to pretend to make use of his own power. Mm. Whatever is within him. He yeah, believe in the force, Tenchi, exactly. <laughs> and they kind of stole the lightsaber sound effect, but that's okay. You can do that. It's like the power is within. Right. The sword. He throws it's the sword you. away. <laughs> Kind of surprises Kagato. And he around. sounds so mature here. He, he does. He's making statements that mm -hmm. you know he, he doesn't sound 
Well, and, and, and all it, unconfident. And that, that's an, an important point. Once he makes the decision to protect the girls, hmm. um, once he decides to become a protector, it changes. It's, it's like he comes out. You know, he, he, he's, he's, he's he is himself. <laughs> yep. <You're right. laughs> he, he's found his, his purpose in life, which is to protect these people that have come across. Um, so there's a, a a blast, pretty powerful blast. That's not good. Yeah. So he turns. Oh, oh no, 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 no! There are the wings. There are the wings. How is this possible? Yeah. Mm-hmm. thinks all is lost. Not quite yet. Ooh. And again, some wonderful animation here as Tenchi uses the power of the wings to transform into new armor or new outfit, I should say. And the option. And I love this. <laughs> he grasps it and becomes a sword. Yeah. That's hey, a transformation awesome. of <laughs> objects into existence. Yeah. Yeah. I think Washi was getting a little too excited. <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh-oh. That's not going to work out so well. Either Tenchi's on a roll. And the classic anime. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> and the shield Boom. Boom. Sword. Yep. Yep. Battle. Mm-hmm. Oh. And we see he did slice whoa, through him, whoa. but Tenchi's able to heal it up. He's able to actually regenerate his own body. Whoa. <laughs> Tenchi has the power. He sure the family, does. The family has to say, strong in him. <laughs> oh. You won, boy. He's done. He's done. And oh, cut in half. Yeah. And Washu is surprised. I want to make him mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Wow. And the and living room. Uh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> With built-in organ. Pretty, pretty nice. Wow. He, his, his outfit. Yeah. Suddenly transverted back. back. And so he said, so with Kagato down, now it heals. Everybody's on the same side of the ship mm-hmm. now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love how she trips them. <laughs> she's not going to let them get the jump on. No, her. she's going to be first. She's going to be the first one to hug Tenchi. And like, oh! Oh! <laughs> 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 the, the rabbit cat you. <laughs> how dare you. Oh, Washu. Then mom. <laughs> oh, mom. No. Washu, no. <laughs> She's very polite. <laughs> Hi. Can <laughs> I be my guinea pig? <laughs> oh, but it's <laughs> she pulls one, another appears. This time it's tsunami. Of course, poor Sasami Sasha. Sasami. Tsunami Sasami. Yeah. <laughs> and unfortunately, Tenchi doesn't quite know his own strength. He's kind of cut the whole ship in half. Oops! <laughs> Run! <laughs> uh, the Coke cans. I love those. Back ones. on Earth. Back on Earth. <laughs> another yeah. normal day. It's going to be another fine day here on planet Earth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Breakfast time. <laughs> Explosions in the background. <laughs> another normal day. So that's the <laughs> <laughs> um, Not long after this came out in America, there was a, um, a poll on Usenet, back for those of you who remember Usenet. Uh, Rec Arts Anime Mist did a poll for best anime villains, and uh, Kagato came out on top. He was, <laughs> everyone loved, loved Kagato as a villain. He, he's a really fun one. So what'd you think? I liked it. I liked it. Yeah. I want to see more. Yeah. <laughs> and fortunately, this series has more to it yeah, but, funny. but the OBA mm-hmm. that section that section is done so what, is there a second there's, there's a second there's actually a total of three OBAs um, plus a little mini uh, actually two little mini episodes Ooh. yeah so there's plenty more and uh, those are all part of what's called the the, um, the OBA continuity so as I mentioned before every time they did a, a new major Tenchi series they would often we cast some of the uh, um, origin stories and so forth, but for the OVAs, it's it's all the same story, same writer working on all of them. So you get the same, so um, um, you get more backstory, more explanations about the characters, um, what was going on with Washu, um, why is she seven hundred years old but she looks like a child? Um, that's kind of <laughs> weird. About that. Yes, <laughs> and that that, they, that is revealed uh, more about the whole tsunami tsunami thing. So they, they explain all that. There's a lot of very Surprising stuff that they reveal later on in the series. It left me wanting more. Yeah. It's a good, good story. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. What did you think of the um, uh, of the animation in this episode? 
uh, in terms of the, the sort of overall quality of that and how it got, got across the story. I, I, I like the feel for the dimension. The yeah. dimension of it. It, 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 uh, it, was, it was very abstract in its approach. Mm -hmm. uh, unlike some of the other episodes where you're taken to sort of a realm where you suspend your disbelief, okay, this can happen. Yeah. This was more of a abstract thinking, kind mm -hmm. of playing with my mind, the whole double realm, mm -hmm. the ability to draw power and create matter, mm -hmm. uh, sort of uh, it, it, the, the abstractness of it was a little bit more deep in this episode. Yeah. And it's one of the things I like is that Tenchi can create, um, the Tenchi franchise can create these interesting um, um, powers and abilities, but they, they try to stay within that, um, uh, within the limitations of that. So they'll create this, op this opposite world, but then you can only go through one way. Mm -hmm. And so they, 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 they stay within the confines of that restriction for the rest of the story. Uh, it's very important to when you're creating all these crazy things to have some limitations, some continuity, some, some continuity, limitations, exactly. some, some boundaries to the <laughs> multiple realities that could <laughs> possibly be spun off. From that. <laughs> yeah, it can get really complicated really quickly. Um, I particularly liked in this. <laughs> Tenchi is a great example, actually, of how um, how anime studios like to do animation. Um, and it's something, it's something you see a lot in anime, and we'll see if we can see some good example of that in that ending. Um, and for you listening on, on the audio, uh, well, not going to have you too much. Um, but when uh, Tenchi's attacking, and in his initial uh, attacks here, you get some very detailed animation. So here, he's coming through, and that's fine. The goofiness there. So we get this beautiful animation of him running at Kagato. And, and again, actually, we'll, we'll, we'll show this even a, a little bit more detail. Um, well, you know, I didn't notice that the mm -hmm. wind rain isn't there, isn't as visible there from that previous scene. Mm -hmm. Go back a little bit there, see if we can see that. So there it's visible, but mm -hmm. when they're in the background. Oh, oh that's interesting, yeah. yeah. And that's something you see when you're closer mm -hmm. near wood, but when yeah. you're farther away from wood, uh, the wood grain kind of blends mm -hmm. in, you don't really see it as much. This so every little detail. Yeah. Uh, the distance that you're viewing things from comes into they, they really thought this through. And that's something that goes back that um, uh, in the back understanding comics talks about that. Um, how in, in manga they will tend to be very abstract until they want an object to have that weight and that reality. When something that object will then get all sorts of detail and all sorts of uh, reality. Uh, and it's very important for attracting the eye. Like you say, it's not important to see all that wood grain here. It would detract from getting across the story. Um, so Tenchi does this this gorgeous leap, and then you notice in this shot, nothing moves. The the camera is just zooming in on Kagato, and then we get this uh, wonderful zoom in on, on the sword. Exactly. And then Kagato is just standing there. Tenchi leaps back and is just kind of talking. And so it's this alternation between this very simple movement, or minimal movement, and these very detailed movements. Um, again, I, I just uh, really want to get across the animation here. When, when Tenchi falls down, I'll see if I can't uh, slow it down a little bit. So he gets hit here. Watch how he sort of wavers on his knees as he comes down, and how Ooh, a real yeah fall. yeah. And, then, uh, mm -hmm. and you just see kind of the weight of all that cloth uh, on him. Uh, there's a lot of detail. Oh, uh, no, not so much. Oh. And again, it, you know. That wind, they had to animate all of the, that, that movement. It, it's amazing. Um, and so th this is part of that anime desire to show what's important. They can absolutely animate in, in a lot of detail, um, but you don't do it all the time. Otherwise, it, it, it gets muddy. But uh, yes, the animation, I think, in this episode, um, like you said, the, the, you know, the art is very distinctive, very abstract. We said that that front hall almost had an MC Escher feel. Yeah, like I think he said earlier. Definitely, it's a it's a very a very unusual way of doing things, and it's also important for your final episode to to set it in a place that feels dramatic and feels different and feels. It definitely felt dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what those two are made out of. I, I, what kind of wood? If that's a, the same kind of material that's a good that the question. is made out yeah, of. Yeah, that's a good question. Family trees. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> literally. <laughs>
So, uh, yeah, it's a very interesting episode. Uh, a lot of stuff going on. And like we were saying, it's, it's interesting how in Tenchi, um, it can go very wild, it can go very crazy, but you still feel like you understand what's going on, which is, which is very important and, and pretty cool. For, especially for a, a weird sci-fi kind of sci-fantasy series. So this could got some gum from good uh, he, the, So Oh, no spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I will say that like as far as I, I have not seen how the Okay. Plenty of other villains show up and then all sorts of stuff. So one of the things I actually like about Tenchi is that generally speaking, when they deal with the villain, the villain's dealt with. Mm-hmm. If, he's, if he's dead, he's dead. If he's not dead, they'll show that and say he might come back at the end or something. Yeah, you come back later. the shadow is a good speech mm-hmm. exactly. It is. I, I gotta remember to do that. <laughs> Go out into real life. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Just my shadow. <laughs> That's okay. I wasn't hurt. <laughs> it was my shadow. <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah, so that, that, that's Tenchi Yogi Like you said, um, uh, kind of whets your appetite, appetite for more. There, there's more stuff coming for, for the franchise, certainly if you want to go further than this. So we should probably say, um, after OVA 1 is OVA 2, there's no more detail, um, made mm, a few years after this. And then OVA 3 came out like five years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, so the animation is quite a bit different. The style is a little bit different. Um, obviously, it's all digital as opposed to all cell here. Uh, you can also move on to the Tenchi uh, TV series called Tenchi Universe. Mm. And that's, just, that's a 26-episode TV series. Um, again, they, they, they rework some of the origin stories, but the characters are you know, the same in terms of personality. And that's a fun little more light adventure story. So now with 26 episodes, that mm-hmm. would be a two-season? Um, or is that one y- season? That's a very good question. So in Japan, generally speaking, um, they do have things come out over the course of seasons. So 26 episodes will be a two-season show, so fall and winter, for example. Uh, but it's not seen as two seasons of a show in the sense of like House of Cards has two seasons. Hmm. It's just one continuous um, 26, 26 episode series that just on. goes on like a season of Friends. You know, hmm. it's not going to be 13 episodes. It's going to go over the course of a, of a, of a year. Uh, but it's just all those episodes all together. Yeah. Um, and Tenchi Universe is also kind of nice because it's a bit more episodic. Um, there is some larger storylines, but... Um, it's having that slightly lighter tone makes it a little easier to, to just come in, watch a few episodes, go away. Like that. Yeah. Sometimes I miss a, a bit here and there. I love to <laughs> love to binge watch because then I can devour everything. But sometimes I get up and make a yeah. sandwich during the show. <laughs> I hate to say, oh, I get to rewind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, um, Liquidus makes a good point. So there is a villain in Tenchi Universe called Kagata. Mm. So they kind of he, he plays a different Indeed. role. Same role, similar personality, similar powers, but a different character. So um, they, they kind of do an interesting thing that way. Um, and then you were mentioning Ryoko. Um, in the the second Tenchi TV series, Tenchi in Tokyo, we have an episode called Ryoko's Big Date. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> a little teaser there for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I've got to see the rest of the series. One of my favorite episodes, that is. Despite the fact that Tenchi in Tokyo has all sorts of problems, but that's fine. That happens. So there, that is, that's Tenchi over here. So yes, yeah, so we, we, we may be coming back to this at some point. We'll have some more fun with that. Yeah. So we can move on to... Oh, I didn't see again. Moving on to... Yamada. Yamada. <laughs> well, this was quite the episode. Oh, the tissue box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the camera. It's a hint. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I like that walking sun. I know it's fun. That's cute. A little opening credit sequence here. So, here's an important thing. So it's spring, which means it's time for new school year. New school year, right? Oh. So, um, and that's a different different type of school system. So right. They their end of year at end of winter, basically. Winter. Yeah. So, in fact, I think earlier on I said, um, or somewhere I said that it's um, it's in calendar year. It's not quite. It's, it's like a, a month off. Um, but yes, yeah, so it, it's spring. So Yamada is now a sophomore, and still a virgin. Takashi, her, her good friend, her loyal friend. Ah, <laughs> uh, poor Takashi. <laughs> and and now Yamada's little sister ah. is a freshman. <laughs> I was I, I was I thought she was. I mean. Younger than that, <laughs> she, she, she's definitely uh, uh, petite. Yeah, so she's she's just one year behind. Yeah, she is. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Poor oh, Yamada. <laughs> Yamada's gonna <laughs> love the expression. Yeah. Oh. 
one of the really fun things about this is, is they can go really over the top really quickly <laughs> to and H. come back. Oh, I just H. That's cute. Yeah, I just just got that. Check that that's, that's fun. On the boys. On the boys. Yeah. So you might as well sit next oh, to. Oh, Yeah. So good for her. I love her statement up here. Girls want to be me. Guys want to do me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no shame. Still pretty obsessed. Still pretty obsessed. Yeah. Um, so everyone's back in the same class. So this is another uh, sort of useful school thing: is that um, students will get uh, we will get reassigned to classes every year. So you may not be in the same room you were before. Um, uh, a chance to mix it up a little bit. Exactly. Um, so hopefully you get with some of your friends, and you don't. It's why in anime you often see folks kind of running from one class to the other between lunch and such. Um, but a challenger appears. Challenger. <laughs> all the bubbles and sparkles. Oh my goodness, all the boys. Who, who is Ooh, this? <laughs> yeah. Well, she's kind of familiar. Haven't we seen her before? <gasps> oh, it's her. Oh. <sighs> the guys are all love struck. <laughs> <laughs> the wilting flowers. The flowers. <laughs> you know, who are you, Mama? Who are you, Mama? Who are you, Mama? Who are you, She's just off with her head. Oh. <laughs> Which, by the way, that's a reference to um, Rosa oh, Versailles. Rosa Versailles. Yeah, I was thinking uh, uh, the the queen from Alice in Wonderland. Um, off with her head. Yeah. Even the roses. <laughs> <laughs> Different garden. Different garden. Um, <laughs> yeah, so Rosa Versailles is a very you know, hugely popular uh, uh, girls series from the seventies manga and anime, and uh, there's a little, little little callback to that. Oh, kind of fun. Check that out. It's, 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 it's huge. Oh, what's she trying to look up? <laughs> Online purchase of what? shotguns. shotguns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd love to know if that was the original line, if they had to shift some things around. That's just perfect. It's, it's awesome. And then uh, later, what is she looking up? Poisons, I think. Uh, <laughs> you can't get <laughs> Teacher shows up. Um, at the beginning of the school year. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> I'm just a kid. <laughs> very, very cute. It's sort of a super deformed Yamada there. <laughs> Not fun. Ridiculous. Uh, oh, no, the blah, 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 blah. This was an English class. English class. And so. she's from USA, so of course mm -hmm. she has the language exactly. better than all the folks who haven't traveled. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, the sparkles. The sparkles. <laughs> Which they, even the professor. I, I was. So this is the thing that, that kind of uh, I, I really enjoyed about this is that uh, you realize over the course of the episode she literally sparkles <laughs> she the sparkles. entire time. She sparkles. She, I, she sparkles sparkly. at music. <laughs> she sparkles at language. She even sparkles at gymnastics. <laughs> Little sparkles. <laughs> and then back in the English, we were, we were, we were talking about how um, when she talks, at least in the dub, she blah, literally blah, says, blah, <laughs> blah 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 blah. What? <laughs> <laughs> I love the subtitle. The English translation. <laughs> and I think what they were doing is that so typically in these sort of scenes, the Japanese voice actress will try to speak English, but the character is supposed to speak flawless English. <laughs> so rather than try to make her do that, just blah 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 blah. Yeah, you get the idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moving she on. Doing English class. <laughs> so, but where are we now? She still has the boys around her. Yeah. Um, Yamada is a little jealous. Yeah. Oh, goodness. And home economics is not working out well. <gasps> oh, she does not Yamada. <laughs> How'd her food turn out? Let's take not a look. So well compared to. Oh, oh, whoa. Oh. <laughs> oh, my. A lot of competition <laughs> here. So this gets back to a lot of the Japanese sort of cultural expectations of girls. Um, Girls have to be able to cook well. Um, Doesn't she sparkles at cooking? Yeah. <laughs> even her, even your modest friends give up um, and say, "Oh, that's, oh. Good. that's delicious! That's <laughs> incredible! I cook and that's good." I love how Fcom has this rich inner life. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's the poorest, <laughs> eating the most delicious. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You're on my side, aren't you? <laughs> You're in my camp. No, 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 no. no, no. My stomach. <laughs> <laughs> And again, you have this this very um, uh, sort of hyperactive jump between different art styles. It's really <laughs> neat, and very goofy, very quickly. But no, no, Yamada's very concerned, and she's not very. <laughs> <laughs> she's scouting. <Not> happy. <laughs> happy at Kosuda. <laughs> Kosuda just has no idea what's going on. <laughs> Poor guy. Um, so we've got to choose class rep. Class rep. And of course, who who gets chosen? Leadership. Oh, the cutest girl. Right. 
Oh! She turns away for two seconds, and already her rival has overpassed her. And oh, uh, she proceeds to go through all of her qualities. It's just, you really talk, move like that. And, How and can she like do this? A 15 degree turn, <laughs> her weight halfway on one foot. Is she a model? Like, oh. And here's a classic Yamada moment where she decides to be secretary, which means that she's at the board writing things down, which means that she's at her back to the class the entire no, time. It's here. <laughs> oh, so she can get her spot. Then. No. I love this trick. Yeah. Ah, all the boys are there with the mm -hmm. papers. I'll just ah, 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 ah. but it backfires. But it completely backfires. <laughs> in, in typical <laughs> amount of fashion, she uh, sabotages herself by mm -hmm. absolutely. Yep, yep. <laughs> and her friend always there, but <laughs> friend always there, giving the more realistic. Yeah, kind of fun. Um, oh. All the girls who are thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. And so here we get the reveal that um, she was in a fashion magazine. Or a photography magazine. But who reveals this? Kosada. Kosada. Oh, no. Kosada's oh, been looking at her and he's figuring out what's going on. Oh, it's because he recognized her. He's the owner of the magazine. Exactly. What's going on? Well, her brother photo photographed her. And her brother. He just happens to win everything. So, gosh. Oh, tee hee. <laughs> <laughs> <She's Yeah. laughs> I was so frustrated. Um, but then when Kosada explained that he just saw in a magazine, I just saw it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a photographer, it's a photography magazine. Exactly. Yamada comes out of it. Yeah, she's like, okay. And I think this gets back to that relationship between the two of them. Mm -hmm. like, Yamada really is jealous. Like, she really, you know, she does care about that relationship. Mm -hmm. But as soon as Kosada explains things, she's cool with it. Yeah. yeah. She, That's a good. Healthy. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty it's healthy not, reaction. It's not that bad. Yes, but we always see our first hint now. Ooh, Ooh, a little, little back and forth. Look yeah. at this. Oh, it's on. It's on. It's on. Yeah, something very bad's Ooh. going on. Yeah, that's up. Oh, that's a palace home. Now we get the, the home on top of the home. It's, yes, it's cavernous. Yeah. It, it's got marble statues, so, palatial residence. Big red carpet. So oh my goodness. we see this so often in anime. You know, the rich girl. You know, the, the the classic trope that one of the one of the girls has a lot of stuff. Beyond wealth. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen, yeah. Well, you, you seen Kaon? Uh, um, um, uh, Miyuki, uh, ridiculous wealth. And so here we go a little bit over the top. She's she's not obsessed with it, but she has a picture of the magazine cover <laughs> on the wall. It's larger than life. <laughs> I think that's a hint. She yes. Loves looking in the mirror. And... <laughs> oh, it is on. It is on. She she recognizes a rival in Yamada, who of course did win that competition. <gasps> the first time she's yeah. she lost. Uh oh. So she's got to do something, and how is she going to do it? How is she going to get back at her? <laughs> she sparkles even when she's <laughs> running <laughs> out of plans. A pinky laugh. <laughs> pinky laugh. The classic pinky laugh. Oh. And there will be all of the. Uh, it's not just a monumental <laughs> place, but it's a monumental place on top of a monumental place <laughs> in a huge yard, <laughs> huge grounds. Oh, um, the, the girls there who love her, mm, but I want her to die a little. <laughs> <laughs> I love that line. Uh, it's weird. I want her to like me, but I also want her to die a little. <laughs> the jealousy. She's so wonderful. I hate her, but I love her. <laughs> That girl cattiness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she has her little, I love this little song she sings about destroying Yamada. <laughs> it just kind of goes on and on. It makes no sense. We just keep singing and singing and singing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a secret. Yes. So she's being invited back to the house. Ooh. We're gonna see what's gonna be exactly plan. <laughs> it blows up Kosuda's uh, attempt to ask her out on a date, and here they are in the stretch, 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 stretch solid gold limo, <laughs> fruit. A little silly. Oh. They're already on the grounds. Yeah, we've been on the grounds for for plenty of time. We are here. We're just driving up to it. <laughs> Crazy. All the guys. Nice intimidation factor. She tries. <laughs> all the servants are there, ready and greeting, sparkling. Even the servants sparkle. Even the servants sparkle. And this, again, classic Yamato moment where she sees a a, a male nude 
and it gets very, very well, well, intriguing. She goes and looks at what? <laughs> okay, um, there the, she the middle, is. The, the middle region, uh, central, <laughs> central region of it, which uh, her rival completely mis misinterprets. <laughs> And so pretty quickly now we, we figure out what's going on. You're not gonna poison me. <laughs> <laughs> so the pot thicker size. Exactly. Constant glitter. <laughs> Love it. <gasps> <Because I'm laughs> secret. I think I know what's the secret. <laughs> <laughs> Which surprisingly would have been yeah. less mm. shocking. <laughs> less shocking than the reality. Um oh, get that. Oh, that's, that's, versus tiger. that's a great shot. The, the then, classic rivals. Yeah. We are now. It's definitely on. We both know it's on, and we mm -hmm. faced up. Okay. Yeah. And one thing, one thing I appreciate about this, which um, I was afraid they were going to fall into something, is that the rival asks, "Who's your boyfriend?" Because I'm going to steal it from him. And so Yamada does this, the, the right thing. And, and <laughs> okay, so we got to explain <laughs> okay. this. Um, so, so Yamada says, "Well, of course I'm not going. I'm not going to tell you who it is. I'll give you a um, reality." So. Rival says that we're going to find out who's on top. <gasps> we're going to find out who's on top. And Yamada's uh, imagination. Yamada, yeah. Who's on top? Uh, who's on top? Oh, who's on top? That kind of on who's top. Who's on top? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not ready for that. <laughs> oh. I'll steal B Cup's boyfriend. Exactly. <laughs> it's funny hearing Chris Ayers pop in there. <laughs> not really. <laughs> So now the rival has to, um, she, she's feeling down, she's not sure what she's gonna do, so she needs some solace. Keep your hands off my box. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are a few lines like that too. I'm like, do they know it? Yeah, they know what they're saying. Yeah, okay. They know what they're saying. Uh -huh. That could be, oh, okay, yeah, it was. <laughs> right. And so now she, um, she opens her box. Yeah. Um, and it's reveals a, a lot. Ah. Like but she pressed it. She pressed she it. Pressed it. And she asked, they asked for a voice. Voice recognition. What's the I password? I love you. And then we have the opening of the door and the door and the door and the door. But that's not it. It's like, get smart. <laughs> <laughs> and she comes sparkling. Yeah, right. Biometrics. And print. And retina, retina skin. <laughs> and oh my goodness. She opens she one computer. Secret. What would be, oh. She has a crush on goodness. some guy. Yeah, she really likes this guy. She really, really likes yeah, this, this guy. This, this is shrine territory. Yeah, this is pretty serious that's, business. That's that's that's, that's stalker creepy yeah, territory. That's pretty that's, stalker creepy wow. territory. Yeah, she's, she's got the his smell clothes. of him. <laughs> Gosh. Oh, but the, the main the, the housekeeper comes in and sees. Yes, she, she doesn't. She's she's only worried about people getting in, <laughs> unless it's her confidence. <laughs> And I think she's the one who reveals it's not very healthy to have this level of obsession over your brother. <gasps> Brother? Oh dear. Brother? Yeah. Brother. Bit of a bro in, con here. Who's in Harvard? In Harvard. Yes. In Harvard. And I think we see a shot here at some point. Um, oh, yeah. There he is at Harvard. I, I love this. So we cut <laughs> back to Harvard, and we have all the the very uh, blonde brunette girls uh, looking at him. She's emailed me, texted me, called me for the hundredth time. Yeah, he's <laughs> it's he's a family trait. He sparkles. I know. A sparkly family. Yeah. She even sparkles on the phone. <laughs> she sparkles impressive. on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh gosh. So, but no, she, she's convinced. She, she's certain. That girl loves her brother. She, that girl loves her brother. I love the animation in this when she starts. Uh, Oh, she, she's <laughs> wiggling back and forth. The full body pillow. <laughs> no, she's she's oh, serious. Oh, oh my no, goodness! What's I wrong? know. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? <laughs> everything. So many it's everything. things. <laughs> okay. Please keep her on our team. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my. Oh yes. So that was a switch. Now, if Yamada ever finds out this, oh, good point. Person number two on her hit list <laughs> for her hundred men—that would be the ultimate yeah. twist on her <laughs> rival. Tiger would take Snake, <laughs> put it in the. Oh my! Oh, well, I'm wondering if Yamada's going to be able to. If she finds out, she can, um, she can really hold that over. Oh my! Yeah. I mean, if word got out, that'd be pretty serious business. Now, her name was Kanejo? Kanejo. Uh, Kanejo. Kanejo. Yes. Kanejo. Kanejo has, her secret is much more deep than Yamada, <laughs> even imagine. <laughs> Indeed. Um, 
Um, yeah, that and seems like tough what, security to crack. What's, what's bad about <laughs> this is I, I don't even know how Yamada's going to react to this. I don't know what yeah. she's going to think, whether she's going to fight. I don't know. <laughs> this girl's a super freak. Yes. <laughs> pretty, pretty weird. And there they are, even in the end credits. Nice. <laughs> so what's going to happen next? Well, she has a one month, I'm going to steal your girlfriend, or your yeah. boyfriend mm -hmm. ultimatum mm -hmm. to uh, uh, Yamada. Yeah. Uh, she has told her, within mm -hmm. one month, I'll steal you. Yeah. Boyfriend. And we've already gone a year. Yeah. So that should be pretty, pretty quick. And Yamada's thinking through, oh, yeah. this is my boyfriend. Right. Oh, this is my boyfriend. Mm. <laughs> well, in, in the beginning of the episode, she says, uh, "It's time. We're just gonna we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and just take care of this. It's good. We're you know I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Just to stop waffling around." But uh, arrival appears a bit too quickly. So, so uh, is she gonna be pulled away by the rivalry, or is she gonna go for her goal? Is she distracted on her journey. That's a very, very good question, and I think. It's a great way of getting to kind of the heart of the series is that Yamada has this, let's be honest, straightforward goal. <laughs> <laughs> she knows what she wants, and it would not be hard. Ambitious girl. Yes. Um, and, and even her short-term goal is pretty straightforward. Um, but she keeps getting so worked up over the relationship side of things, which is not bad. It's not a true life. It's true uh, right. she, she approached it with one thought, but she, you can't. Completely divorce your feelings from a situation. Yeah. And, uh, wow. Mm -hmm. Based on the way she behaves and her goals, <laughs> I think she'll take the route of her feelings. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. Um, she certainly has a, a lot of feelings. She does. <laughs> and they're strong. And her imagination is just <laughs> Her imagination. Oh. Always the dirtiest route <laughs> for Yamada, which is so much fun. Like you're saying, so much fun to see that from the, from the girls' perspective. I know girls think that, but they don't admit to doing right. that. Yeah. At least not in front of guys. Right. In front of their girlfriends, yeah. they'll say that. And so it's it's refreshing. It's, mm -hmm. it's very refreshing. It sure is. <laughs> so we'll have to see. So we're about halfway through Yamada, and uh, we'll have to see what happens moving on. Episode six. Episode six. Yep. So we're heading on to episode seven. Everybody, yep. check that out. Yep. Yep. Well, check out episode seven for next time, which means that uh, next time we're going to be moving on to our next anime series. Our next anime. Yes, which will be the melancholy of Harumi Suzumiya. The melancholy of wow, that's a tough name. That's a tough Haru, name. <laughs> Haru, Haru who? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this was the, the the classic series, the melancholy of Harumi Suzumiya. From I think 2006, if I'm remembering that correctly, mm -hmm. um, that uh, kind of come, came out of nowhere and exploded all over the internet and fandom, and everyone loved it. So we'll be watching that next time. So check out now. I should point out, important, we'll be watching this in broadcast order. So they showed so the episodes do not happen in chronological order. As part of the appeal of the series is you know understanding where we are in the timeline based on what episode we're watching. So go back and and look for. Um, broadcast order with watching it in that order. So, so if somebody got the series, that wouldn't be the broadcast order then. So this was a nice thing: is that when Bondi licensed it and released it, they um, folks said, "How how is that going to be ordered? How are you going to do this?" I never um, even thought about that yes. as being a factor in releasing <laughs> a, a title because yeah, there could be uh, you could start the story in the middle and then have. Mm -hmm. The earlier episodes be released later, right? And 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 that was part of the the unique thing of the series is is that they were very deliberately revealing things in a certain order in that sort of out of order order, if you will. Um, so what Bandai did, if you got the original original release, they said we're going to give you both. So you got a whole set of DVDs in broadcast order and another set of DVDs, two releases, yes, in the Whoa. same box set. In the same set. Yeah, so, so you bought the series and you got both tracks all the way through. Now, are they the same shows? Yes, just same, different same, order. Different order. So you can have, you know, four discs set up in chronological order and four discs set so up they in didn't broadcast clean order. it up for, uh, for, 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 this is the TV version, this is the... Nope, nope. It, it, it's the same content, just in a different order, which is pretty, pretty cool. I should also point out, which is, again, kind of important, is that... Um, um, yes, I do plan to do every episode of Endless Eight if we get there. Um, the whole other whole other thing. 
Um, so um, when Kyoto Animation, the studio that made Haruhi, uh, when they initially released, I think we mentioned this before, they um, obviously there's some animation mistakes as, as it goes through. Um, and Kyoto Animation actually published a side-by-side -side comparison of all the fixes they made. And so they made all those fixes before release on DVD. So um, all the little issues they had with um, things where, for example, um, two characters would be in a shot, and then they cut to a different camera angle, and that, that character should technically be slightly in the shot, mm -hmm. but didn't show up originally. They, they drew that character back in. A little bit of extra time to refine the product. Exactly. Um, and there are little things like um, in their club rooms, and it's at a, it's in a particular room in the... Um, so they, they, they realized, going back, that there's a shot where uh, they've opened the club room window, and then you cut outside the, um, the school, and they looked at it and realized the window that the club room would be in, the window is drawn closed. Now, you <laughs> never know that. <laughs> uh, I mean, they, may, they never make any reference to where that is in the building. But they went back and they some, redrew it. Some quality control person is going, whoa, whoa, how'd you guys miss this? Exactly. <laughs> the whole story is really <laughs> Oh, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> so you got to read deadlines. And that's the thing. Um, so if you have the fan sub for Haruhi, you probably have the, one of all the mistakes in it. Oh, the original release. The original release. So if you go back, and then again, it's going to be the same running time. But you're going to see those little little tweaks and, and bits in there, so it's worth tracking down wow. the, the official release, and you'll get all of those those bug fixes. As a collector, that would be neat to have. Both yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, so that, that's pretty cool. So you'll, you'll, you you will get both both sets on there. Now I um, I should also point out, I believe there was a re-release of, of Harley recently, which was just the series in chronological order. So I'm talking about the, the original North American release. They've had like you know save editions and such. They're just just the series. Yeah, is that the plan for, for next week? <laughs> Cereal <laughs> box version. <laughs> Cereal box version. Oh, when they, when they did it, uh, portrait. Yes. Portrait. Yes. Ooh. Yeah, so the, um, they tried to, tried to make it look like the, um, the novels. They were the inspiration for Harley. Oh, so cereal they, box. I'm thinking yeah. of a, <laughs> you got me thinking of a Wheaties box. <laughs> well, that's the thing. <laughs> they look, well, <laughs> cereal's like, yeah, so it's kind of that portrait. Yeah, uh, or, um, yeah, yeah, the portrait, portrait. Yeah, the landscape. Yeah. For all you listening, <laughs> just to the audio, yeah. we were gesticulating wildly mm -hmm. to show the dimensions and aspect ratios. <laughs> Watch the video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and that's the other nice thing with uh, Good Point Liquidus is that you can go online and, and find out what the broadcast order is. So um, uh, if you want to see um, broadcast order, you can, it'll, it'll say you know, episode one came out in this order, and episode two in this order. So. I, there's one site that I, I like to hop onto every now and then. Mm -hmm. I think it's AnnieDB.net. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and they have all sorts of information about the different characters and uh, this release and that release. And yeah. if you like this title, there's similar titles mm -hmm. and all sorts of different, and they've structured it as a database, which is really yeah. nice because then you can search on stuff and yeah. get the alternate titles. I never knew it was named that. <laughs> and Spain. Yeah. <laughs> That's the other thing. It's amazing how, uh, how, oh, all the different versions and releases and, you know, voice actors and so forth. It gets oh, really crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the English cast, there's the, Mm. The Japanese cast, mm -hmm. and the, the Filipino, Filipino <laughs> cast, the Korean cast. It's, it's pretty, pretty amazing. Now, you said Bandai was the company that released it. Yes. And Kyoto was the studio. Kyoto Animation was the um, anime studio. Studio, the animation studio. Because it's always interesting to, to see at the beginning of, of, of DVDs, there's several different splash screens yeah. this company and that company. <laughs> and then it kind of jumbles together after mm. a while. And, mm, who bought who and when was this released and who is that studio still around? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it's it, and it's it's complicated too because um, sometimes Bandai is a good example where they're a Japanese company, but sometimes they'll have a show but it'll get licensed by somebody else in America because the company's just not interested in releasing that in America. So he says, "I'll do it." Says, sure, you go ahead. Hmm. Um, so sometimes it'll be a Bandai show, but released by Funimation. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, okay. U.S. release. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
In fact, there's a Kickstarter right now for, um, or it's going to be coming up for Otaku no Video, the actual Otaku no Video OVA. Um, and um, it's licensed for release in every country in the world except Japan. Except Japan. Because some, you know, it's already licensed in Japan. Somebody's already selling that in Japan. What? So how? <laughs> how? How? So I'm, I'm sure Gainax still has the rights to release that in Japan. So, you know, those rights are still, you know, wow. there. But for we have to go to Japan. <laughs> exactly. So that, that's the kind of nice thing about Kickstarter is that you can live in Sweden and still buy it. Um, it's just you know, if you're if you're in Japan, you should buy the Japanese version because you're supporting that company in those companies. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's <laughs> cool. So thank you all for watching, and we will see you next week. See y'all. Yes.